Somewhere else, you going back to the house to sleep? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell him how mean he is. Start telling him. He gets mad at us and he pours all our water out. Spell your first and last name for me. Troy Danzinger, T-R-O-Y-D-A-N-Z-I-N-G-E-R. Um, so tell me, how do you know Dakota and how long have you known him? Uh, I've known Dakota my whole life. He's my cousin. And uh, we, I mean, since he was little, we've grown up together, so. What did you think um, when you heard he was joining the Marine Corps? Uh, I wasn't that surprised. I mean, uh, our grandpa was a Marine, so, uh, He's, he was always looking for something adventurous to do, so I wasn't surprised at all. Um, how did you hear that he was, um, or that he's receiving the Medal of Honor? To be honest, I really don't remember. Uh, his dad gave me a phone call. It was probably a couple days after um, the 9th of September when it all happened, and uh, just said that he was okay and that uh, he was alive. He did get hurt, but he was alive. And, uh, after that, you just heard like a little bit of information, a little bit of information. So it wasn't like a big surprise all at once. You know, you hear a little bit, well, he might be up for it. Then a couple months later, yeah, he is. Somebody said something, you know. So it, it wasn't like a great big surprise. Um, how would you describe Dakota? That, that's a tough question. Uh, Dakota is Dakota. I mean, he, uh, he's a hard worker. Uh, you always know where you stand with him. He'll tell you what's on his mind. And, uh, but I guess in one simple term, it would just be a hard worker. Um, now, you're not only his cousin, you're his boss as well. Right. Um, why did you hire Dakota? Uh, well, like I said, we grew up together, so I knew how hardworking he was. And uh, as we grew up, you know, he lived on a farm and stuff, so he's been around equipment and tractors and so on and so forth. So it was a perfect fit. And when he said he was looking for a job, I told him when can he start. And been there ever since. And I assume it's the first Medal of Honor recipient you have working for you? Yes, yeah, his first one. First uh, one. Um, tell me how his time in the Marine Corps, um, the things he's learned there, um, contribute to his job working for you. Um, I guess it polished him a little bit, it would be the best way to say it. Um, you know, he's very organized and very meticulous about what he does. and. Uh, before he went in the Marine Corps, he wasn't, you know, he was more all over the place. So uh, I would say he's just polished, but the hard working parts, you know, he had that before he ever went in the Marine Corps. So I, uh, I guess they polished him. And how would you say um, being a Medal of Honor recipient has changed him, has not changed him? It hadn't changed him a bit. And not one bit whatsoever. Uh, he's still the, the normal guy. I've, I've got a daughter and, uh, plays dress up and dances around the house and a uh, normal guy. They hadn't changed him in the least. And if you and Dakota were going to get in a fight, who would win? Me. Okay. <laughs> no doubt about it, me. All right. Anything else to add? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, really just focusing on the shot and not thinking about questions, but um, you say it's polished him, you know, and what, what have you seen that makes you say, it's polished him. You know, you said he's a little more planned out, meticulous. I mean, there's got a little more to that. When, uh, I guess when, when he wants to turn on his uh, professional side or his Marine side, uh, he can now turn it on and turn it off. So beforehand, it was always, uh, it was just Dakota and he was, um, you know, just, I won't say childish, but uh, you know, like to mess around, goof off, and this and that. And, you know, now he'll still do that, but when it's time to get after it, he'll get after it. And so I guess turning it on and turning it off as far as being a Marine, 
uh, he, he still does that very well. I remember when we, I went to his graduation at uh, Paris Island and uh, you know, he drove home with us. And the whole time he drove home, you know, he was standing perfectly straight up, hands on, I mean, just, you know, looked like a robot. And uh, it took him a long time to learn how to turn back to a civilian and then back to a Marine. And, but uh, I, I guess that's the biggest part of it, is he can turn it on and off. Now. You think having a, knowing what he can do in the field in a combat zone, and you've got him in the field doing something in peacetime like this, I mean, it's got to give you immense confidence that you give the guy a job, it's going to get done. Absolutely. Uh, if you tell him to do something, you don't have to call back and check to make sure it was done. And, you know, he's not going to quit just because it's tough or it's hard or this and that. So uh, the pressure, the, you know, he just really doesn't have pressure. It, uh, he never folds. So uh, if you want a job done and done right, you send Dakota out there and he'll take care of it. Do you think he ought to go back in the Marine Corps? Uh, he wants to go back in the Marine Corps. My selfish opinion says I like him right here, but uh, uh, if I know Dakota and he got a chance to go back to combat, he'd be in the Marine Corps tomorrow, but we'll see what happens.